Am I wrong for paying for another bride's wedding dress, but not my daughter's? My husband and I worked hard and managed to become financially secure adults after both of us grew up in poverty. We raised our children to work hard. We did not spoil them or provide them with a lavish life. As teens, they all had part-time jobs, but we did purchase them their own used cars, which they were required to maintain. We also paid for college and we paid for our oldest two kids' weddings. However, we were merely the ones paying and we did not provide any input or suggestions unless asked. The only thing we didn't pay for their weddings was our son's tuxedo and our oldest daughter's wedding dress. Our youngest daughter, Michaela, is engaged and we are paying for her wedding with the exception of her dress. She must buy her own wedding dress. Michaela invited her dad and I to watch her try on dresses with the bridal party. She found a beautiful dress in her budget and we were so honored to have been allowed to take part in her finding the dress and seeing herself as a bride. Hey, I really like these parents. They sound really dope. While there, I complimented another bride on a dress she was wearing and her mother and I struck up a conversation where I learned that the family was low income and both the bridegroom and their bride's parents had taken out loans to have a beautiful wedding. I 100% disagree with people who have to take out loans to have weddings. Don't have the wedding. Have a party in your house. Go hurrah, buy a cheap white dress from like Ross or something. But you should never take out loans. That's how the system destroys us because society has brainwashed us into thinking that you have to have this lavish lifestyle wedding. Why would you put yourself into debt over one night? Like why? The bride is also plus sized and I learned that she had been to six different stores and there had only been a few options for her size and all of them had just been awful. The bride ended up falling in love with the last dress she tried on but was heartbroken to learn that the consultant had misread the price tag and the dress was actually $1,000 over budget. And with alterations to make it her size, it was another $1,400. The bride took the dress off and said she tried to find something online. I grew up poor and I was also a chubby kid. I was bully and I was very unhappy. I always wanted more and in this bride I saw myself and I didn't want her to have to settle for a dress that fit versus a dress that she loved. So while my daughter was changing, I asked the other bride if I could pay the difference on her dress. It was very emotional. We all held each other and cried. She accepted. See, that's such a nice gesture though. Like that is really sweet. I very happily paid the difference on her dress. Her mother, herself and I are now friends on Facebook and my husband and I have been invited to the wedding, which we will gladly attend. I felt very honored to have been allowed to help this girl in a very very small way, but being invited to her wedding was so unexpected and amazing. When Michaela found out about this, she threw a fit and said that I obviously had shown how I truly feel about her wedding and herself, and if I cared at all, I'd have paid for her dress too. She's now not speaking to me or her father, who didn't even have a hand in this, which is unfair. She has now uninvited us from the wedding. We're so hurt and confused. Was I an asshole? Should I tell my mom that my stepdad is putting the moves on me? AKA her husband. Disclaimers is not my story time. My mom and I have always had a really good relationship. She's pretty much been my best friend all throughout my life. I was bullied heavily in school, so I always confided in my mom. I mean, I tell my mom everything, even about boys. When I was in high school, my parents got divorced. Right after the divorce, my mom had set her sights on this one guy. He lived in our neighborhood, was single, and had a lot of money. Now, you could say my mom wanted his money, or you could say that she fell in love with him. I'm not sure which one. They ended up getting married right when I turned 17. My mom and I moved into his house, and it was amazing. It was actually more like a mansion. He had a pool, a movie theater, and a tennis court. So my house was the house that all my friends would come to. And my mom was really happy, I could tell. But there were a few things that I didn't like about my new stepdad. For example, whenever my friends would come over, he would always try to hang out with us. First, I thought it was just really annoying, but after a year of this happening, I realized it was actually kind of gross. So I opened up to my mom and I told her that I didn't like him hanging around my friends. And my mom laid the hammer down. After that, he would not come around at all whenever my friends and I were downstairs. Here's where things start to get a little icky. When I turned 19, I could tell he was staring at me more and more. Part two is... Should I tell my mom that my stepdad, her husband, is trying to hit on me? Disclaimer is not my story time, I sent me on Instagram. When I turned 19 is when I started noticing that he would stare at me more and more. I usually would walk around the house in my bikini whenever I was going to go in the pool. Sometimes I would wear shorts and crop tops around the house or be in a sports bra and leggings whenever I was working out. But his staring clearly made me uncomfortable. So I literally had to change the way that I dressed. And I didn't want to tell my mom just because I thought maybe I was reading too much into it. Instead, I told my best friend. And when I told my best friend, she told me that I needed to be really careful around him. She told me I shouldn't even be alone with him in the house. I started to get really, really paranoid. One day, my stepdad asked me why I stopped dressing the way that I used to. Point blank, I said to him, well, you stare a lot and it makes me uncomfortable. The smile on his face turned into pure anger. Then he started calling me stupid and ignorant. He said that I was dumb for thinking that and that he was totally in love with my mom and that he would never ever see me that way. But he continued to stare at me. A few months later, we decided to have a party on my mom's birthday. Well, my stepdad got hammered and when no one was looking, he sat down next to me and put his hand on my lap. That's when he said that he missed the way that I used to dress. And the look on his face was disgusted. Part three is up. 
Should I tell my mom that my stepdad has been hitting on me, aka her husband? Disclaimer, it's not my story time. I sent him on Instagram. When he put his hand on my lap, I pushed him away and told him he was being disgusting. That's when he grabbed my hand and told me that there was nothing wrong with him appreciating my beauty. And remember, we're at my mom's birthday party. I went over to my mom with the intention to tell her, but she was having so much fun and it was her birthday, I didn't want to spoil it. For the rest of the night, I had to avoid him. He would follow me everywhere and try to grab my hand. I finally went up to my bedroom and locked myself in there. A few days after the party, he came up to me and said, I need to apologize to you. And I said, what for? That's when he said, you know why. Then he told me he made reservations at a really nice restaurant for us to go to. And of course, I said no. That's when he told me that we were both adults, that we could hang out together when my mom wasn't around. I said no, and I've been avoiding him since then. But I think avoiding him is doing the opposite. He now started sending me gym selfies. I told him he needed to stop, and he said he just wanted to send me his progress so that I could be proud of him. Him. Ew, never. I decided that I should move out and I started looking for my own apartment. I thought maybe I should wait until I move out to tell my mom or maybe not tell her at all. No, this is going to break her heart and flip her world upside down. He has a really good life with him, but I don't think that's worth losing me, right? How should I tell my mom? My biggest fear is that she doesn't believe me. What should I do? Am I wrong for revealing my pregnancy during my sister-in-law's wedding? I know it sounds bad, but hear me out. I, 27 female, found out I was pregnant about a month ago. I was planning to tell my husband, but I changed my mind after I wanted to tell everyone and excite my husband and family at the same time. Though I was honestly a little lazy and didn't want to plan an entire dinner or event to reveal my pregnancy, I knew my husband would be suspicious of why I suddenly wanted to host a dinner party. The only other event that everyone was going to attend was my sister-in-law's wedding. Now, personally, I don't like my sister-in-law. She's always on social media with a thousand pictures every 10 seconds, flaunting her lavish lifestyle with their fiance's money. You just sound like a hater and you want to use her event for your own benefit. Hater. My husband and I aren't wealthy, so I thought maybe revealing my pregnancy would mean I can get even about all those times she bragged about her expensive new purse. You're using your pregnancy as a leverage? It's dumb. The day of the wedding arrives and everything is just beautiful. I was honestly kind of amazed at how incredible it looked. I tried to find a nice time to reveal my pregnancy, but it was honestly much harder than I expected. Flash forward to when we were taking pictures and I gathered everyone up to make an announcement. I ecstatically announced my pregnancy. People like you are the worst kind of people. Oh, I don't like you. You were for sure the asshole. I don't have to read any more of this to say that though, but I'll keep going. But instead of getting congratulations, hugs and kisses by the guests, all I got was kicked out. Good, you deserve to be. Everybody was whispering under their breath, but it was obvious to everyone that what I did was messed up. I don't understand why everyone was so negative about the situation. The most shocked about it was clearly my sister-in-law. She goes berserk, screaming about how I was always jealous of her and how I just couldn't keep help but ruining the best day of her life. I agree with her. Like you literally said it from the beginning, your intention was bad. I was too shocked to make a sarcastic remark. She was screaming for me to get out. My husband just grabbed my hand and took us to our car. In the car, my husband lost his temper and asked why I would ever possibly do such a thing. I hesitated to respond, but my husband sure didn't. He called me a massive prick and said I shouldn't have done what I did, but I don't understand. Every time my sister-in-law brags directly to my face, no one says anything to her. When we got home, I checked my sister-in-law's Instagram and it was filled with exaggerated posts and way too many cringy emojis. You're hater i honestly feel kind of bad now that i thought about it but i don't think i'll be satisfied until i get a professional response to my dilemma so am i the asshole 100 percent for sure not only did you mess up your sister-in-law's wedding that's your husband's sister like you your selfishness not only ruined it for yourself but for your spouse like uh, be the bigger person in this situation there are some times when it's okay to be petty but this wasn't one of it is it okay that my boyfriend is trying to convince me to let him do the dirty with my cousin? My boyfriend used to be my sneaky link before we made it official. At the beginning, neither of us wanted a relationship, but the more we kept hooking up, the more we wanted to be with each other. So naturally, we hung out all the time and he asked me to be his girlfriend. And of course, I really wanted him to ask me, but I would never bring it up myself. So when he finally did, I said yes. But here's the thing. My boyfriend asked me if we could have an open relationship when we started. At first I said no, but then I thought about it some more. If he wants to see other girls and cheat on me, he will. And because of the way we started, I knew what he was like. So I thought to myself, it's probably better to just have an open relationship than to be wondering if he's cheating on me. So after a few weeks of me asking him, I said yes. But I laid down some rules. If he was going to hook up with somebody else, he needed to tell me. He kept telling me that it was better to just not talk about it, but I told him I wanted to know the truth. A few months into the relationship, everything was fine. According to him, he was not hooking up with anybody. And I know that I wasn't either, even though the option was there if we both wanted to. This is around the time that my cousin came home to visit from college. Growing up, everyone thought that her and I were identical twins. We really do look so much alike. We both have the same exact body type, pretty similar features. We both have long black hair, and we even dress the same. So it's natural that people thought we were sisters. I told my cousin about my boyfriend and she wanted to meet him. So I had a dinner at my place. As soon as my boyfriend saw her, he basically started drooling. It made me so angry, but I had to keep my cool. Throughout the dinner, my boyfriend kept complimenting her. He talked about how much her and I looked alike and how it would be any guy's fantasy to watch us do it. My cousin was super uncomfortable so I asked him to stop doing that. Part two is that.
Is it okay that my boyfriend is trying to convince me to let him do the dirty with my cousin? Because we have an open relationship, he feels like he can do certain things in front of me. For example, like flirting with other women in front of me. While we were having dinner with my cousin who was visiting, he kept making comments about how hot she was and how her and I look exactly like twins. My cousin was clearly super uncomfortable, so I asked him to stop, which he did. That's when my boyfriend dragged me into our bedroom and asked me if he could do it with her. I said absolutely not. One of the rules in our open relationship is that we can't choose anybody we already know. He told me that he technically did not know my cousin. I told him family was off limits. He asked me to think about it. It. I drove my cousin home and that's when she told me that my boyfriend was really hot and I was shocked I thought she was uncomfortable at dinner. I pulled the car over and asked her if she was interested in him That's when she said she overheard our conversation Yep, she heard when my boyfriend was asking me if he could do it with her She started to laugh and told me that it was okay and that she wouldn't tell my parents Then she told me that an open relationship is always a bad idea and that nothing good will come of it I asked her again if she was interested in him and she said maybe she says you should just let us do it part three is up is it okay that my boyfriend is trying to convince me to let him hook up with my cousin? That's when my cousin tells me you should just let us do it. I looked over at her and I said, are you crazy? And she said, if you guys already have an open relationship, what's the difference? I told her I wasn't going to be comfortable with her and my boyfriend doing it. And that she needed to get that idea out of her head. And she started trying to do reverse psychology on me. She said if I didn't let them do it, that he was going to eventually resent me. And that he would see me as the bad guy. And that he'd probably start looking for other girls. I could not believe that my own cousin was trying to do that to me. I started to cry and I asked her if she loved me at all. She then hugged me and says, of course I love you. This is the best thing for your relationship. Part of me started to actually believe what she was saying. I thought maybe he will resent me if I don't let them do it. After that, I didn't talk to my cousin for a few days. During that time, all my boyfriend did was ask me if he could see her again. I made the mistake of telling him that my cousin was down, and then he started pushing even more. He promised me he would only do it with her once, and that nothing would change between him and I. Here's the other thing. There's a guy who's always asked me out on dates, but I always say no. He contacted me and told me that he was finally single and that he really wants to see me. I told my boyfriend that if he was going to do it with my cousin, then I could do it with this guy. That's when my boyfriend said no, because I had feelings for this guy. He's arguing that he has no feelings for my cousin and that if I do it with this other guy, it would be like cheating because I do have feelings for him, which is true. I don't know what to do and I am so confused. I could just go behind my boyfriend's back, but part of me feels guilty. What should I do? If you are in the passenger seat of a car and the driver is maybe a little befuddled, confused, stressed, lost, and they say to you, is anybody on my right? What do you do? How do you respond to that situation? What do you do? What do you say? Pause the video, comment, and come back. Because I was just in that situation. I was befuddled. I was lost and stressed to no end. And I turned to my friend and I said, hey, is anybody on my right? And she said, I don't know. Anyway, I asked him, is it even legal to own a wallaby in the state? And then we nearly got taken out by a Jeep because she didn't help me and I needed help. And I'm embarrassed to say I got yelly, okay? I was like, what is wrong with you? Would it have been that hard to check my blind spot? And then I thought, whoops, that is not how you talk to humans. And so I immediately brought it back down. I said, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have yelled at you. Um, I think you need a kangaroo permit to own a wallaby in the state of Washington. <laughs>
just acknowledge, though, that that was a weird thing that you just did? That way, you, you just, that's not customarily how that's handled. One time a guy asked me on a date to play racquetball, which if you don't know what it is, it's it's the game where you hit the ball against the wall and then your opponent hits the ball against the wall and then you, I think that's how it works, okay? But basically you're hitting a ball against a wall and he asked me to, to play it with him on a date and I said, I'd be happy to go, but I've never played racquetball before and I can't catch, throw, or kick a ball. And he was like, don't worry, you'll get it. And I think sometimes people think that I'm faking humility and I'm really being honest about how horrible I am at things. And he took me to play racquetball. He signed me in as a guest at his gym. And then pretty quick after we got in there, he was trying to teach me how to serve. And I asked, I don't know how I did this, but I hit the ball straight down. It went straight up to the ceiling and broke the light. And I was like, should we go tell someone? And he said, no, we should run. And we just left the gym. And then he asked me out on a second date, surprisingly, and he said, do you play tennis? And I was like, no, I said I can't catch, throw, or kick a ball. And he was like, I'll teach you how to play tennis. So he took me back to his gym. They didn't know that we were the ones who destroyed the light in the racquetball room. We went onto one of the tennis courts, and he kept hitting tennis balls past my head. He was like, you'll get the next one. You'll get the next one. And I was like, I told you I'm bad at this. And then after like an hour of hitting tennis balls past my head, we ended the date and he never spoke to me again. <laughs> Story time about how my mom made me shave my hair off. So a little background information, I was 13 years old and in seventh grade, and I had just moved to a new school this year because my grandma was really sick and my family and I needed to take care of her. And for like the first two months, I had a big problem making friends until I met my best friends, Ashley and Nicole. Ashley was super sweet and Nicole was kind of a bitch. And I was in between, so we kind of all balanced each other out. But fast forward to later on in the year, we met this one girl named Kelly. And I'm not gonna lie, she was super nice, but really annoying. She would always try to talk to us, always try to hang out with us. She was literally stuck up our asses 24 seven. And the one day Ashley convinced Nicole and I to have a sleepover with Kelly and her. So we say yes, and Nicole, Ashley, and I are all texting in the group chat. Nicole goes, well, I'm not going to promise that I'm going to be nice to her. And she actually said that we were going to play a prank on her. And that's when Ashley bailed because she didn't want to be a part of it. Like for part two. Part two about why my mom made me shave my hair off. So like I said, Ashley bailed because she did not want to be a part of Nicole's evil plan to bully this girl. So fast forward, Nicole and I go over to Kelly's house and I start to feel really bad because Kelly's actually super nice and she wasn't as weird as I thought she was. Fast forward, Kelly's sleeping and Nicole comes over to me and she's like, hey, come to the bathroom with me. So I get up and I go to the bathroom and Nicole pulls out Nair. 